Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744. So today, guys, we're doing a special Euro 2024 final preview. So let me explain how this is going to work, and we're going to go into it. So for this final preview, guys, I'm going to have two guests feature on this video. So stick around. There will be two guests that will come on. It's just that I'm not gonna. We're not gonna have them all together at once because we weren't able to find the right time to convene because of time zone availability and all that. So rather, what I decided to do is just have them to insert the clips, and I asked them a series of questions, and they answer the questions on here on my channel. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So we're gonna hear from me first, and then we're gonna hear from Tenant Item, and then we're gonna hear from Matt's at the end. So let's start with my segment first. This final match, Spain versus England. It's actually interesting, guys, because this file we've actually had already take place in other types of football. We've had seen at the women's game, at the women's World Cup, where Spain won 1 0. And then we also saw the under 21s, I believe, where England won. So this final is crazy because we have the best team in the world, probably against the best depth, uh, depth in the world. Now, people will probably say France. You can maybe argue. But England and France are, like, interchangeable. They have the best depth. That's what makes this final interesting, is that Spain have played the best football. Spain have been so amazing this year, guys. Spain have been fantastic. The likes of Yamal, the likes of Nico Williams, the likes of Fabian Ruiz, the likes of Rodri, Cucurella, like, um, Danny Olmo. I, I could go on and on. There is endless amount of players that played so well for Spain in this Euros. Spain have been amazing. Spain have been so fun to watch. They're playing a fluent football. They're playing vibrant football. They're so press resistant. And Spain could actually achieve history here by winning all seven games, which has never been done, by the way, by your champion. And they can go for number four on Sunday and can be in that conversation. Um, and I believe they'll go, uh, they'll actually be the mo team with the most amount of trophies won in Euros history if Spain do pull off on Sunday. As for England. England to this stage have not been great. England have been very much unconvincing. And a large part of the reason why England made this foul is because of individual brands from certain players like Bellingham, Saka, Watkins. And England, it almost feels like England have just done the bare minimum each game to make it to this position. But as I said in finals, guys, it's not about how you get here. It's about getting here. That's the more important thing. Because we can all agree that Spain have had a much tougher route to here because they defeated the host Germany, which they have never defeated by the they have never defeated a host nation before in their history. And they defeated France, that are arguably one of the best European nations the last couple of years. So when you look from that logic, Spain should win this. But football finals isn't about it's about it's finals about moments. Moments are key, right? And I honestly believe that England had more clutch moments than Spain at this Euros. Because look at the goals that England have scored. It's all been crucial goals to decide the game, to get back in the game. Spain haven't really had a clutch moment. You can maybe say that Moreno moment against Germany, but that's pretty much it about it. There's not really been any other clutch moments from Spain. And I think for Spain, they've been so good, so well organized, so well. But my one criticism I have with Spain is that I feel like at times when they have played against the top teams like France and Germany, they've gone a bit defensive in the second halves. And that is something that England can capitalize on. Because we have seen that in the knockout stage, England have not scored first. But they've been able to manage to come back. So England have had the mentality to come back from a losing position. That is something that we are yet to see Spain. We only saw Spain do against France only once. But we saw how bad France were. And uh, we saw how bad France were in that first half in particular. So the thing about this game is that Spain have the better team. Make no mistake about that. But England have better squad depth. Because England can bring players like Palmer off the bench. They can bring players like um, uh, Watkins off the bench. Tony off the bench. And I look at England. Players that played so well for them in the Euros has been Kobe Miner. Miner has been amazing. And you have... Uh, Declan Rice has been good. I would also say Pickford's been good. Stone's been good, you know. And I think for England, what's key is that midfield battle. The midfield battle is what's going to determine this game. Because I have a strong inclination that whichever team wins that win in midfield battle will probably most likely win this game. Because we are we have Mainu versus Rodri. Then you have uh, Danny Olmo versus Jude Bellingham. They're pretty much like for like. And then you have Rice uh, versus Fabian Ruiz, you know. 
that is a very interesting battle we have there. And I think both midfields have been great in this Euros, generally speaking. So I think it's, it's so tough to call, guys. It's so tough to give a prediction for this final because I, I really do feel like Spain are the favorites. I think we can all agree with that. But finals, as I said, guys, is about moments. And I just got the sense that this game will be very cagey. It won't be as one-sided as many people would expect. Because people are thinking, oh, England have been so lucky to get here and everything. Guys, final is close. Finals are generally very rarely one-sided. And I just think it's going to be interesting. So this is how the game, I think, is going to finish. I think Spain will score a a goal there in the first half. And I think Spain will kind of go defensive in the second half, be a bit pragmatic. And then England, out of nowhere, will score equalizer. At an extra time, I don't think much is going to happen. And yes, I'm going to say it right here. I believe England will win on pens. I got the feeling that England will win on pens. And I just don't trust Spain on pens. I don't trust Spain on penalties whatsoever. And I think Pickford's going to come clutch. And let me just say this right now with Spain. They have the quality to do this. They are the favorites for this final. It's just that because it's a final, I just got the feeling that England's going to do it. Because there's a lot of pressure in England to do this. Spain, there is no real no real pressure for them to perform. England, there is pressure because this expectation is there for England. And this is their opportunity for them to finally win Civil War after not winning Civil War so long. You know, And I will say this for Spain. Put it this way, guys. Spain versus England, I would probably back Spain to beat England in a quarterfinal, round of 16, a semifinal. But because this is a final... And because England have been here before in 2020, Spain really haven't. I think experience will actually come up clutch. And I did say my pre-term predictions that I said that Germany versus England would be the final, which I was close to be fair. Um, it also ended up being Spain. I said that England would beat any other team in the final except for Germany, except for Germany. And I feel like I should stick with it. As much as it's contrary to a lot of people, as much as a lot of people made uh, disagree with me. A lot of people may dislike this video. I have to stick with what I've uh, said, right? And am I confident in this pick? Not really. I'm not confident. Spain had definitely what it takes to win this game. But I think for Spain to win this game, they have to do this. They have to make sure they don't go defensive. They have to f- kill off the game as soon as possible. Because if Spain go 2 or 3 nil up, the game is over. The longer it stays 1 nil, the more it suits England. And I think for England... I think their best bets to win this game is an extra time or a one or on penalties. I don't think England is capable of winning this game in 90 minutes. I think this game will either go, if England is going to win, it's going to be either extra time or penalties. Like I said, guys, it's going to be a great final. My goal scorers in the day, I'm going to quickly go over my goal scorers and then I'm going to give it to the other guys. I am going to say Rodri's going to score, score for Spain. And I have a feeling for England, it's going to be. You know what? I'm going to go for a crazy take here. No, actually, you know what? I'm going to play this. I'm going to say Jude. I'm going to say Jude. I think Jude's going to score. I think Rodri and Jude will both score. It'll be 1-1. And I think that's how the game's going to finish. It goes to Pens, and I think Pickford's going to be the hero. So, guys, that is my prediction, guys. Let's now hear from the other guys. So, I think between myself, my pre-tournament expectations, and a lot of other Spanish people's Expectations were a little bit different. Um, for more of the Spanish people, uh, the expectation was maybe quarterfinal, maybe semifinal if lucky, um, but definitely not make the final or go potentially all the way. Whereas, like me, my pre tournament expectations, I said this team is good enough to win the tournament. I said Spain's midfield is the best at this tournament. Uh, Wadri, Fabian Ruiz. Pedri, obviously he's injured now, Danny Olmo, uh, Mika Marino. So I, I said if Spain's midfield can cook at the Euros, I think Spain can win the Euros. And uh, pre-tournament, I have Spain winning the Euros, so you know at least I have a chance of that actually happening on Sunday. So yeah, my pre-tournament expectations was Spain can can go on to win this tournament without doubt. And, and now people want Spain to win. Well, as a Spain fan and living in Spain, I'm, I'm excited. I am a bit nervous just because uh, for a team we're up against, which is England, 
they've been to the final in the previous Euros, so they kind of have that experience of playing in a moment like that. Whereas the Spain team, yeah, we won the Nations League, so at least we've won something. But you know, it's a different type of pressure when you are in a final. But as I said, I think the history that the Spain team has in terms of when they get into finals, especially with the golden generation, I think a lot of the Spain players are up for it. So I think as a fan, I'm nervous. I think anyone can be nervous heading into a final. Um, but also I can be confident and excited at the same time. Um, so I would probably say I'm on the fence, nervous, worried, but also confident and excited. For the starting 11, I think it will be the usual changes that needs to be made. Um, but I think the team kind of picks itself. So goalkeeper would be Simon, Unai Simon. And then right back, instead of Navas, we have Carvajal. And then the two centre backs, I think it will be Lenormand and Laporte instead of Nacho. And then left back, Gukurea. And then in the midfield three, you have Rodri, Fabian Ruiz, and Danny Olmo. I think that's practically the midfield I would think the Elefante will go for. And then obviously you have the star of the, sh the, star of the show, Lamin Yamal on the right. And then you have a player that I've raved so much for two, three years already, Nico Williams. And then up front will be Alvaro Morata. So, yeah, I think that will be the starting 11 and then, you know, you can have players coming off the bench as usual. I, to be honest, I think any player from that England team can cause the Spain team issues um, because England's defense is quite good, but in terms of um, attacking threat for England, I'd probably say someone like Bukayo Saka. Um, also players like Phil Foden, who I think if he plays centrally, which I think he will, um, can be a threat, uh, Harry Kane if he's on it, so to be honest I think anyone from that England team can be a threat, so you know it's up to the Spain team to make sure they neutralize those threats for England and you know go on and win the game, so yeah I think any player from that England team can be, uh, can be a threat, Saka, Foden, Kane, even Bellingham, so, yeah, I think this final will be a bit cagey. I think both teams have been very good defensively. Um, Spain actually conceded fewer goals than England throughout this tournament and it, uh, Spain has played better opposition. Um, so I can see both teams being quote-unquote defensive, trying to solidify, so I think this will be low scoring, we won't get, I, well I hope we get a exciting final, but I think it will be a cagey, nervy game. I can see it being 1-0 or 2-1, but I think just because both defenses have been pretty good um, at this tournament, I'll go with 1-0 Spain, because obviously I have to back Spain, but I'll say I wouldn't be surprised if England actually do end up winning the Euros. But just because of bias and I want Spain to win, I'll say 1-0 to Spain. Who would get the goal for Spain? Mm, maybe I'll go with the, probably I'll say the most clutch player um, when it comes to finals. I'll say Rodri will get the goal. Um, but I don't really care who scores the goal for Spain. As long as Spain ends up winning the, the Euros, I don't really care who scores and this result. But I'll just go 1-0 to Spain and that's how I see it. But at the same time, if England ends up winning, then fair enough. So please do subscribe to my channel. I will be doing a vlog for the final because I live in Spain. So I will be out and about in my city. Um, a small town, not really a small town, but a nice town, nice city in in nor the northwest of Spain in Galicia. So, if you guys want to enjoy my vlog, subscribe to my channel. 10 a.m. the usual. Um, and yeah, Viva España, vamos, and 
hopefully, number four is coming to Spain. Vamos! Predictions were that I had Spain versus England to get to this final. Uh, but the way the semi finals turned out in terms of the opponents, I did not expect. My feeling was that England could edge it with a 2 1 or whatever. A win in normal time is something of this, of these circumstances. My feelings as of now are this game can go either way. Um, and it's a hard one to call. I have. Honestly, I'm not sure who I would change regarding the starting 11. At least most of it should stay the same. One of the good things. But we have seen in the the last game, and maybe the game against Switzerland as well, was despite them playing a back three, at times the way they played allowed them to be flexible to change to a back four when convenient. So that's one positive factor. I mean, as for changes I might possibly make, um, Luke Shaw seems a, a fairly good standout player to pick um, but then you here one advantage Kieran Trippier does have and this is a good argument that um, Lamine Yamal's a left footer and Kieran Trippier's a right footer so that might actually work for this particular game so um, I'd most of the time I'd, I'd, I'd be advocating for Luke Shaw but for this game I, I could see Trippier working and Cole Palmer seems like another obvious name, but I wouldn't necessarily drop Foden or Bellingham at the same time. So it's a difficult one. But I'd probably keep the, the 11 the same if all fit. May, maybe Luke Shaw, Karen Trippett. That's a bit of a 50-50. England, the biggest threat would have to be Rodri and Fabian Ruiz. Yes, Lamine Yamal and Nico Williams have been fantastic this tournament and they can definitely cause England and trouble. But where I would say that Rodri and Fabio and Ruiz are a bigger threat is that they're the ones that they can supply Yamal and Williams. And, and that's where England need to try and stop Spain from an attacking point of view. Although, at the same time, it's hard not to say Lamine Yamal, given what he's done in this tournament. So, he's him as well. Williams is an honourable mention. But certainly, Rodri and Fabian Ruiz, they're players that can very much be an influence, even a dictatorship as to how this game's going to go whether they perform or not. So I would have to say Ruiz, Rodri, Yamal, and and Nico Williams to an extent as well. My final prediction, I'm saying it's going to be Spain 1, England 1. And to find out who I think wins, check out my prediction video. Thanks for having me on, AG. Um, I'm looking forward to the final. Um, I hope hope you and, the, and all the viewers enjoy the final. <laughs> and I hope I'm going to have the best day of my life. All right. I hope you guys did enjoy the previews that each of us did, guys. So remember, guys, we'll be doing a live reaction on Sunday. After the final, hopefully we can get Tended Item and Master Joy in real time and to give us their thoughts on the final. It should be a good final, guys. Very much looking forward to this final. 
and may the best team win. And please remember to like and subscribe. And please subscribe to Tended Item and Matt's Channel, man. Greatly appreciate it. Peace, guys.